Welcome back guys to Art Life. This week another Florentine episode where we're going to get stuck in to the tour of the Uffizi, one of my favourite galleries in the world, where as an art student I would come and visit here at least four to six times a week as the 96 rooms hold some of the most famous paintings in the world by the best Renaissance maestros from Botticelli, Da Vinci, Michelangelo to Titian, Raphael and Caravaggio. Giorgio Vasari actually began construction in 1560 at the behest of Cosmo de' Medici and the building was made for offices, hence the name Uffizi. Um, However, the Medici dynasty over the next 20 years would commission architects to add galleries and viewing platforms and sculpture rooms to hold some of their more prominent pieces of their collection, creating one of the world's first ever art galleries unfortunately only open to the public in 1769. But still, this collection is absolutely phenomenal as it starts with the early Renaissance and as you move around the gallery, goes into high Renaissance until later on as you leave the gallery, the more Baroque period pieces. You're kind of overwhelmed when you're looking at some of the more beautiful Botticelli's paintings, which you've seen so many times, are suddenly all crammed into one room. I think your eyeballs kind of get a bit overwhelmed with the beauty and the abundance, but I'm sure that's the idea behind this gallery. So I think it's better just to pause and look at a few pieces while we're here, particularly the ones which I feel have moved me so much in my art practice. And you cannot come to the Uffizi without being kind of starstruck by Botticelli's Birth of Venus. It was painted by Botticelli in the mid 1480s and it depicts the goddess Venus arriving to the shore after her birth where she emerged from the sea fully grown. The fact that she is the epitome of beauty but completely nude would have been such a controversial painting in the Middle Ages as it would have gone against so many Christian values which would have been adhered to at the time by artists. The overly romanticised mythological composition It has this central idea of rebirth, of civilization, of new hope, perhaps geopolitical or social cultural shifts which were happening in middle age turmoil made this painting so relevant to art historians today, looking at the work of Botticelli and other artists of this time. It would have been commissioned um, for the Medici's, I think it was the Medici's Villa of Castello. So it would have been a private commission for Botticelli. Therefore, I think it did escape the bonfire of the vanities where a lot of work like this might have been destroyed um, by artists in Florence and the public uh, during Savonarola's fanatical burning of a lot of decadent paintings like this. And I think there's something for me that is so captivating about the modest pose of Venus, the gentleness of her face, how she delicately covers her nakedness with her long blonde hair, which reflects the light. I think even the zephyrs that are kind of like depicted on the left of her and flying into each other's embraces are based on this ancient Hellenistic period of just celebratory romance and eroticism which was I think so adored by that period when Lorenzo de' Medici was ruling Florence. One thing that's interesting about this piece for me as well is when I lived here 12 years ago it wasn't encased in bulletproof glass to this extent it's been mounted into the wall over the last few years with the Uffizi rebrand And obviously there's so many people in here taking photos. You know, it's got this energy of like an aura of untouchable beauty and almost distance to it now that it kind of never used to. I think that the fact that there's so many famous paintings in the Uffizi and so many people clamouring to see them, I tend to go and look for the more unexplored bits of the gallery that I maybe haven't seen before. One of these is actually behind canvases and paintings, sometimes often the most amazing gems and secret drawings and sketches of beauty were hidden on the backs of panel paintings and canvases. And these are the kind of things that nobody looks at. And these are the especially hidden marvels like this when I'm in the gallery, make me feel like I have my own secret window into the Renaissance artist's mind. And also I'm like, I'm looking at treasure which no one else is seeing. So a lot of our trip to the Uffizi was actually looking for strange little figurative paintings and illustrations in the corner, looking at the ceilings and the kind of beautiful, almost Romanesque depictions of Florence back in the 1500s. 
scenes of fresco and trompe l'oeil are just so crammed it makes the whole museum feel like it's overloading your brain with far too much to see and not enough time in the day so i thought this would be a really good moment to actually look at some of the more unexplored aspects of the gallery for me which i normally wouldn't look at which is the antiquity the sculptures of ancient rome which would have also fascinated artists of the renaissance who looked to classicism for inspiration now the view is so amazing with the beautiful windows of the Arno and Florence, but I just thought to take some time with my sketchbook, pick a marble study of a nymph anonymously made of antiquity and just sketch her, take some time to sit down and just observe the lines and contours of the marble and just sketch because this is one thing that Florence really teaches me. It's that I do not sketch enough. I don't sit in the world and just doodle and just observe whatever inspires me in the moment because we're so full of technology normally I would just take a photo and have it on my phone maybe never look at it so actually practicing my skills with pencil and paper is so helpful and I cannot recommend this enough to do more in all of our practices with art to just take five minutes to actually observe and when observing I think you tend to learn more about your skills as an artist, about what interests you with your gaze. For me, it was how the light was hitting her form. Also, the fact that this piece of marble was, you know, a thousand more years old. It felt like what a privilege it is to just sit here in front of it in the sun and just get lost for a moment in a woman reclining like myself, legs crossed, just having a bit of a rest. So it was a really special moment for me here. Moving on, I continue my meander through the gallery looking for strange paintings that I've never seen before. And I can't but help notice that it isn't so much the work of the great da Vinci or some of the more exquisite panel paintings which kind of move me. It's, I think, the more understated Renaissance paintings that I haven't really looked at before, haven't seen, because you can see the crowd surrounding kind of Michelangelo's Donny Tondo if you go just a few doors down, you have a room of sculptures where it looks like everybody's been frozen by Medusa, turned to stone. There's some amazing reclining marble statues just kind of chilling in the corner with maybe only one other person looking at. I think every time we ever go to a museum or a gallery, our eyes will be seeking different things. We'll be looking for different bits of inspiration depending on our mood for the day. I think... I was just so glad to be back in Florence at this point, looking at Titian's Venus Verbino reclining so saucily in her Venetian courtesan's pose, the sleeping dog representing sleeping fidelity at the bottom of her feet. This piece was actually um, commissioned. It was begun in 1532 and I believe took about two years to finish. Um, it was commissioned by the Duke of Verbino, Guido Baldo, the second Della Rovia as a gift for his young wife to celebrate his um, 1534 marriage. The, I mean, the eroticism of the painting depicts this nude young woman to remind her of her marital obligations of what she'd have to fulfil to her husband. The interesting thing was this was actually once hung in the Uffizi when I was here last in between the Duke and his wife, who are very sort of severe in black clothes looking very serious and important and then in the middle there's this gorgeous reclining venus sort of masturbating with her luscious red silks um beneath her and her flowers kind of held in her hand sort of like she's about to sprinkle them over the boudoir it's so sultry um and for its day i think as well has actually inspired so many artists studying the nude over the kind of form of art history because obviously a lot of art history is the male painter painting the kind of female form um i think this piece was taken from the dresden um venus traditionally attributed to giorgione but i think if you think of manet's olympia jumping forward to many many years where looking back at renaissance nudes was just a really inspiring way for artists who were interested in the female form to progress their own painting composition. 
because there's something in the way that Venus stares directly at the viewer, unconcerned with her nudity. I think it's a symbol of the confidence that this particular nude holds that is what draws me to it. She's unapologetic in her form and the way Titian describes her luminous flesh, the softness and roundness to her, the light in the room, even with that little touch of realism in the back with the servants scurrying around, burying, looking for her dress robes for the day. I think there's just something about this painting which I could look at all afternoon. But alas, we can't because Florence awaits. So as we leave the Uffizi, obviously walking by and saying hello to Caravaggio as we leave. The most inspiring thing about the Uffizi Gallery is that suddenly you're back in Florence, not only looking at the amazing architecture of the Duomo and the city itself, the atmosphere of an, a city built for beauty, you feel like you can process what you've seen in the Uffizi, but also in a way where you're then looking at architecture, the light of Tuscany as well, I find so inspiring. We spent a little bit of time um, after the gallery just looking around the Bobbly Gardens, just feeling so grateful that we got to spend a little bit of time in one of the most beautiful cities in the world looking at one of my favourite galleries. So I've hoped you enjoyed the tour of Florence and please tune in next week for more art life adventures. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment below if there's anything that you've enjoyed about this week's episode. Even if it just gives you a little boost of Italian creative inspiration, then I'm happy. Catch you later, guys. Bye.